Good afternoon, everyone. It's Hanifa Menon speaking from hearthealthbrainhealth.com. I'm encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. So today I am talking about our next stage in the conscious evolution in sexuality. So when we look at this stage, I thought I should first review a little bit what we've already gone through. So remember that we started at uh, the stage of innocence, which, which is where we begin. So we start with the stage of innocence where everything is new and exciting and different and you're curious and interested and all of that emotion is happening in the stage of innocence. Then we move into the stage of the ego where a person is recognizing, I like this. And then the other person is realizing, I like this. And if you're alone, it's only I like this. And then oftentimes it's like, what do I like? Why well, like this more? I like this less. I do not like this. So all of that is happening in the stage for the birth of the ego time. Of course, in that time, there's also that curiosity, hopefully still in there, that is about what does the other person like or not like? And if there is a not so easy time in this stage, there will be a bit of conflict about how come you don't like what I like and how come you won't do what I want you to do? Or how come you make me do the things that I don't like? And when are we going to do the things that I do like? Um, how come we're always doing the things that you like? So those are the things that can arise in the ego stage. Then we move into, and I believe that I had mentioned uh, the movie Nine and a Half Weeks and how the ego stage could get to a space like that where it's more and more and more is needed for exciting someone. Then we moved into, hopefully, a healthy progression into the stage of the achiever. So the achiever suddenly understands, ah, I know what it takes to make me happy. I know what it takes to make the other person happy. And this is such an achievement. And sometimes it's through other things. So it will be through accomplishments in life. And there will be achievements in day-to-day -day experiences. And then there will be achievements sexually. So when we think about achievements sexually, let's say a person has never reached climax or never had orgasm before, and reaching that stage is a huge achievement, and oftentimes for both sides, so both sides get very excited about that achievement. Sometimes a person uh, climaxes too fast, and so if they have a slower time before they climax, that's an achievement. And then sometimes both are discovering things that they both like or like to do differently or music or other senses that are involved. So again, taste, smells, sounds, everything that is contributing to the achievement of a wonderful sexual experience. So whether for the individual or for the couple. Now, remember that every stage of evolution has a little bit of unease that precedes it. So even a couple that is really happy in that stage of the achiever gets to a place where it's like, something's missing, something's missing. And this is consciousness evolving, expanding, right? So this is, this is something new is happening. So something new is happening and something's not so comfortable. Now remember, if a couple is really happy, what would create that sort of space? Maybe they're growing in different areas of their life. So maybe their work is getting more demanding. So somehow everything that was happening sexually was is not capable of happening now. Or perhaps someone has an injury and that is not allowing the same sexual satisfaction that was happening until now. Or perhaps there are less than positive communications happening within the couple. So that is creating a stage of potential evolution. And in the best case scenario, people move and grow into the space of the birth of the giver. The birth of the giver suddenly realizes, wow, I feel really good in giving in this way. And this could be in any regard. So it could be someone who's actually achieved a lot of success in terms of financial success. I feel like giving to help people. I feel like giving. So this is like the philanthropist that this is giving, but without a need for recognition as was in the previous stage of the achiever. So how about in terms of the conscious evolution in sexuality, what happens? This is a space where there is giving freely without this desire or need for getting something back, even verbally. Now, 
I believe that these situations can happen through anything. So remember, in terms of my very first video in the presence in sex or about the presence in sex, presence in sex talked about the definition of sex that I'm using for these videos. And in that definition, you can review it, but it includes words and touch. So when we're looking at these two aspects, let's say in the stage of the achiever just before this, we really like the feedback that, you know, you like this, I like this. You like this, does this make you feel good? Does this make me feel good? I gotta make sure you know that I feel good, right? That sort of idea. And then I love hearing that you feel good. In the birth of the giver, there is just, I really feel good in making you feel good. This is a whole different space. Now, some people would think, I'll say probably many people will think that, well, how can that be satisfying? If someone is giving and someone is receiving, there's not the back and forth. Now, remember the back and forth related to a transactional type of relationship, which I again talked about in the previous stage. In this stage, it's not so much dependent on that. And you would again think, that seems so unusual. How would that be satisfying? And so, of course, I've got some quotes for us today that will add to this particular stage of development or evolution. And give me one second while, while I get this up for us. <laughs> I'm getting something up. How is that? <laughs> okay, so you know I have to go there, right? So, yes, it was amusing to me, and I hope that was amusing to you too. Um, Give you a second. My computer's having some fun with me here. So I am not having huge success. <laughs> Yet it still makes me chuckle. Here we go. Here we go. So here is my first quote. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So this was a quote by Pablo Picasso. And you would think, okay, so it's to find your gift and the purpose in your life is to give it away. And one thing we can think is, okay, well, again, if an artist is creating something and then giving it away, it's a nice feeling, right? It's a nice feeling. Though many people would say, well, I hope he's making some money for it. <laughs> and so this is, this is the stage of a giver. This is the stage of a giver. So remember that in the previous stage, there is a desire to receive something back. And when we think about this particular stage of giving, again, the only minds that would go into, but what are you receiving if you're giving, are the ones who have not yet moved into this stage. Anyone, and I suspect everyone, who has uh, given something freely to someone will understand the amazing joy that comes from that, that experience. So let's go to a very simple example. A very simple example is you have extra toys in your home because your children are grown up and someone in the family, um, a brother, a sister, a niece, a nephew has a child and you have all these fun toys that you can share with them and you give it away freely, right? That was easy. That was very easy, but what a good feeling. How, how easy was that and how wonderful did it feel to do? Now, then you think about, okay, so that's easy enough. What about we come back to sexuality? Same thing. So remember, touch or words. How easy is it for you to speak? How easy it is, is it for you to say something kind? And you will recognize that in these times or in this stage of development or conscious evolution, it will not be not easy to speak kindly. So this is because the consciousness has a desire to be there because it feels that good. And touch will be the same thing. So I know that I um, will... I love receiving massages and I love to give massages too. So sometimes couples will give each other massages. And in those situations when there's no need to receive back, that's a wonderful place of being in the giver stage. In the stage of, and now it's your turn, and now it's your turn. Um, I did this, so you do this now, right? So you're going to do something now too, right? That sort of feeling is in the previous stage. In the stage of just wanting to give, it's this stage. And it is a fabulous feeling. Now you would think that how can that feel so fabulous? You'd be surprised how much when you're truly giving from a place of your heart, you are receiving something fabulous back. That sense of joy, that sense of satisfaction for yourself happens. Oftentimes, 
that joy does bring something back to you from your partner too. Whatever it is, whether it's that lit up face, whether it's the the wonderful warm hug, whether it's a treat just because they want to now do something to be giving to you, not because they're trying to pay you back for doing what you did or reciprocate because you did something great, just because they truly want to. And it's so nice when those energies are combining with each other. Now, I want to also bring this back into presence because every stage that I'm talking about in the conscious evolution in sexuality is going to include presence. So presence has this quotation that I wanted to share with you from Mother Teresa. She says, it's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. And this makes all the difference. So whether this stage or any other stage, when there is love in the giving, it's a whole different experience. And if you have experienced this, you know exactly what this feels like. When someone has given you something with no expectation, anything, even if it's only someone holding a door for you, and it's just because it's a simple, simple to ask task, but I will tell you, it feels lovely. It really feels lovely. I remember years ago speaking to some ladies at a retreat and I had said, don't you love when guys hold a door open for you? And they looked at me kind of surprised and they said, yeah, that's kind of nice. Now, I remember at that time, a lot of people were like, I don't need someone to hold my door. I'm a woman, but I don't need a man to hold my door for me. I will hold a door open for a man. I will hold a door open for a woman. And when someone holds a door open for me, I love it. And so these ladies were also in that space of that sounds lovely, but I haven't had anyone hold a door open for me. And why is that? Is it because we're not tuning in to the fact that this possibility is probably happening? Or is it because we feel we're not worthy? And when we're feeling in that place of not worthy, it is kind of the energy that we receive too. So this will happen in relationships too. So as our consciousness evolves and we feel like just giving, just for the sake of giving, Oh, it comes back. It comes back. Have you ever had someone? And if you haven't, I would suggest you find someone soon. <laughs> I'm kidding. Try this. Learn a language. Really, even if you are online, you can learn a phrase from a different language and try to say it romantically into your partner's ears. But if you have ever heard someone say some romantic language into your ears, I think for me, um, I think Spanish and Italian are very sexy to me. Very, very sexy. And you might have languages that you are feeling really aroused by. For me, I like those languages. Um, they, they feel sexy. But because I don't actually understand or speak them, if someone said something to me and I'd be all turned down, it would all be in the way that they're expressing it to me. So again, whether I'm feeling some loving energy from it. So it's quite possible someone could be telling me, go pick up my shoes. <laughs> in a really sexy way in my ears and I think oh how sweet <laughs> so remember this also again comes down to it's not the content of what we do in our conscious evolution in sexuality it's actually it is the love that we put into the giving that we do it is the true authentic love and that is felt if you are saying something to amuse your partner now I could be a person like that because I love laughing. So that is very exciting for me to laugh with a partner. But I will say that I wouldn't do it to, to play a joke on a partner, right? So that's not my intention. So my energy is different. It's pure delight. It's literally just delighting another is to me part of being present. So remember in the last video, I also talked about watering a plant. And do you know, paying that attention to a plant, whether you're looking at the plant, you're speaking to the plant, you're watering the plant, that attention helps that plant blossom. And remember, the quotation I used in the last video talked about our relationships blossoming by presence. So how you speak to your partner, how you care for your partner, maybe you cook for your partner, maybe you clean with your partner, maybe you are cleaning for your partner, maybe you are driving your partner, wherever you are doing with love, it's felt, it's felt, it's felt, it's not lost. And you can move this into the bedroom or anywhere else that you want to have some fun with your partner or alone. Don't forget that this applies to yourself. How do you speak to yourself? How do you listen to yourself? What are the words you say to yourself? Can you arouse yourself even with just the verbal dialogue that goes on in your own mind? 
because that is an exciting place of giving. So today, I would love for you for five minutes after this video to sit and think about what space of giving are you coming from? Are you coming from a space of wanting something back in return for your giving? Because you can, and that's totally fine. This is only to gauge where you are in your conscious evolution. And if you are in the space where you are even at the back of your mind saying, well, yeah, it was okay to give five times, but by the sixth time, I couldn't wait till a person gave me a massage, right? That's a space just before this time. If you're in a space of, I just love giving. I, I always feel fulfilled when I'm giving. Like, and I always know I get something back. I always know whether from that person or from the universe in general, something fantastic happens for me. And it's very exciting. See, where are you? No judgment. Maybe you're in an ego space. And that's okay because the ego space is still achieving great things. And these things are those accomplishments of, I like this and you like this. It's all of that discovery is such a beautiful space. Every one of these stages is a beautiful space. So today, just sit and think, where am I today? Where am I at this moment? For five minutes after this video, try to figure out where you are at this moment. And I hope you have fun with this exercise and I hope you think of creative things to give and share with your partner in whichever way is exciting for you. If you are an artist, you might look at artistry, right? You might, some people are tattoo artists and they might actually create an artist uh, tattoo on, on an arm, a leg, something. Someone else in terms of artistry might actually create a product and say, look, I made this and this is exciting. This is for you, right? This is what I'm giving to you because I was thinking of you when I made this. Some people paint, some people body paint. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do. Some people write, some people recite poetry, some people it's speaking a different language, some people it's just speaking lovingly, some people it's looking lovingly. There's so many things. Sit down for five minutes and figure out what kind of things are you in the space of giving for and see if you can share this with yourself and or your partner. And I hope you know, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.